What's going on everybody? This is an episode from the No Gimmicks Needed Wrestling Podcast. Do you like podcasts and you want to see the full podcast? Make sure you check out the No Gimmicks Needed Wrestling Podcast on all your podcast platforms, such as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, among many others. But you're listening to the episode right here on YouTube, so make sure you hit that like button in below and make sure you hit the subscribe button to NC Studios and NC Level Up for all your gaming needs. This is the Nerd Coalition. Enjoy the show. We got to talk about my man, John Cena. Exactly. My man, John Cena, at Money in the Bank. And it's, 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 it's a while ago. You know what I'm saying? A couple weeks ago, he announced that 2020, uh, 2025, that's the end for John Cena. It's done. No more George. No, no, no more, you know, the hats and colorful shirts. It's suit and ties from now on out. I'm retiring. Royal Rumble, my last Royal Rumble Elimination Chamber, my last Elimination Chamber, WrestleMania in Vegas, my last WrestleMania. All that stuff's going to be my last. Okay? So, what I want to do real quick is, I, I want to tell you about my history with Cena. How I felt about Cena, his, Cena's career, and what I think Cena should be doing going on to 2025. Alright, so here's the, here's the deal. I am, I, I, I was a, I, I'm a fan of Cena. Okay? Overall, I'm a fan of John Cena. I'm a, you know, I'm a huge Kurt Angle mark. That's my favorite wrestler of all time. Cena's not even in my top 10 of wrestlers, but I do like Cena. I have met Cena on a number of occasions, and I'm not just talking about, you know, okay, hey, we wanted to take a picture with Cena. Like, I actually talked to Cena for a little bit. And from those experiences, Cena has been a very heartwarming, nice guy, especially to my son. Cena has always been great to the kids. I mean, the man granted the, the, the most wishes ever in, in, in the Make-A-Wish. Like, you know, he, he, he's one of those guys. Like, he, he's the greatest uncle to the point like, hey, I love kids when I can give them back, not when they mine. That's why I ain't got none. I, I, I feel that. And every time when, when, when my son was younger and he was getting the wrestling, he was a huge John Cena fan because what kid is it, okay? All the fucking kids love John Cena, okay? And allow me to be frank here. So... We met John Cena a couple times because he he came to Comic Con twice, and we met him as a fan because once Cena was you know the first time we see Cena was like sixty dollars and we had to go to get like the you know the Photoshop meet and greet type thing like that, and then because uh, I, I I I do photos opposed to autographs because I'm like yeah you can get the autograph but it's something about me having that 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 picture of us being in there with that person and getting to shake their hand you can do that with the autographs too but my son cared more about the picture. And we was in there, and oh my God, each time I went to go see Cena, it was like three hours that we was in that line. Because Cena would take his damn time to sit there and talk to every fucking kid that was there. And I'm not talking about like, hey, how you doing? Let's get a picture. Let's keep it moving. No, hey, what's your name? What do you like? Are you in school? What you I'm like, yo, bro, we in line, my man. Can we move, pick this up? I'm just, as you know. Parents, like to the point where I, I would just sit down in line and say, Yo, just gotta stay away. Three hours, we being seen this line. I have been in other lines to meet other wrestlers. I have a, uh, I was a gallery of pictures that I've met. I've met Sting, I've met Dolph Ziggler, I've met Randy Orton, I've met Daniel Bryan, I have met uh, <clears throat> Roman Reigns, I've met Seth Rollins. Like, I've met a lot of superstars, and none of them. None of them took me three hours. Hell, even on top of that, like I said, I've met Scott Hall. That was one. That's one of the best interactions I've had. Kevin Nash, Booker T twice. N- none of these things. Bret Hart. None of these things took three hours just to, I'm talking, just to be in line. We didn't even get to the motherfucker yet. You know what I'm saying? And then when we got there, and once again. You know, it's like like the people at Wizard World be trying to push them along. Like if anybody was in Philly went to Wizard World and Mexico, y'all would know. But if y'all had kids, he sat there, asked my son, "How are you doing? How old are you? You in school? Do you like school?" And then he's all into this. I'm just like, "Yo, can we just take this picture and keep it moving, though?" And then he asked us how we doing and everything. Dad doing a good job, race like, but you don't know my son. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm, I, I, I'm just I'm just uh, feed off the bullshit, right? But uh, yeah. Great experiences. It just took a long time. Cause that's how impactful Cena is, especially to them kids. Now, once again, I was never b- big a fan of, you know, um, never give up Cena. 
Super Cena. You know, Water Depp, Babyface Cena, Hogan Cena, whatever the fuck you want to call him, Fruity Pebble Cena. And I was I wasn't a fan of that Cena. My Cena was Dr. Thugonomics, okay? And I think a lot of people like the Dr. Duck of Thugonomics. And, and, and I, I'm not saying it because I know everybody would be sensitive when you try to bring race into it. I'm not trying to cause a divide. I'm just trying, I, I want you to understand something. We as black people, right? Everybody, whether they think they notice it or not, when they watch television, when they watch sports, when they watch anything entertainment, naturally, when they see somebody that they can relate to, they automatically, it, it's a different kind of gravitation to that person, okay? So, it's nothing wrong with that, okay? And when you when you're a wrestling fan, when when, when you're black and a wrestling fan, there ain't nothing but a ton of white guys around here, all from from spaces on spaces on spaces. Now, of course, the landscape looks a lot different today, but growing up in eighties and nineties, that's all it was. White guys on top, and then every now and then you get a Booker T, and it's like, oh snap, I'm a huge Booker T fan. But and I'm not sitting here saying because you know I know people. You got you got the black folks talking about some you know appropriate and all that stuff like that. I'm not even I'm not even talking about getting into all that. But I'm just saying when it came to Cena, right? When Cena first came out to did the Rufus Aggression, I was like, okay, you know, it's 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 a it's a it's a job that looks, you know, Rufus like, okay, we'll probably see him on some velocity. But when he started doing the Doctor Thugonomic stuff, and it was just like it was it was actually kind of cool. It was like I'm feeling this. Now of course you know when he did like the, the prototype, and if we start doing like the early shit, like in two thousand three or two thousand two, so day when he was doing some on velocity, you know, I was like okay. Um, but when he was on, like when two thousand three came around, like and then when he started getting to that heel, John Cena, and he was just rapping, and he was kind of everybody to the point where. Hip hop artist was looking at Cena like Run DMC, and he was talking to you know, Hov, and he was talking to something. He, he was just, you know, remember, remember, there's a rumor thing about his supposed to be having a rap battle against Hov at WrestleMania 23. That um, WrestleMania 19, that was actually a thing. So I gravitated towards. I was like, Yo, okay, yes, it's just the white dude, but we got Eminem out there too, and he's he's dope. So we just like, Hey, yo, we got this hip hop guy who's cool, got an awesome rap album. Uh, when they came out in 2005 and we was feeling Cena I still be feeling the Doctor the, the Dr. Thugonomics beat over my time is now uh, time is now that's why I be playing 2k I be so happy when they be added the, the, the doctor the doctor of Thugonomics I'm getting caught up in my tongue here and I get the I get the blasting music in the background and I'm like over oh, my time is not saying my time is now is a is a bad song it's just that it shit is overplayed to the you know the umpteen power Right, so you, so you, you just naturally when you're younger, you kind of relate to that. It's like you know, sure, could have been you know, should I have related more to Rikishi when he when he was doing the bad man thing? Kind of did, but you know, he's so small. It doesn't matter. I'm just saying, when people sit there and say, oh, something can relate to, you kind of gravitate towards that. And I was feeling, I was all for Cena, you know what I'm saying? And, and he had the two thousands. I'm like, yo, my man, I go out with the same shit. Swing mans was a thing back in two, for, for, for those kids, you don't kids you out here listening who don't know, dumb swing mans was a thing back in the 2000s. You, if you ain't go out and with, with a swing man jersey, whether it be basketball, football, or baseball, they had a match and fit it, they, they had a sports gear on out like, out in public with that, yo, look up any 2000s thing from there. That was the fucking style. With them jean capris or, 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 or them Chabot jeans or something like that, that's what he was wearing. And we was feeling that. I was feeling that. I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, do I like too much of Suck and, and Evolution as a wrestling fan? Yeah, but I'm just saying, but come on, man. Cena is where it's at. Cena is where it's at, and that's what I was relating to. And then all of a sudden, you know, he came to Raw. He got big, and then all of a sudden, you know, after the ECW, after after Chain Gang was over, it was, it was the more, it was like Eminem goes to Vanilla Ice. You know what I'm saying? It's like, Eminem is like, yo, we know he down, and we know he down in hip-hop, he down in the culture type of thing, to Vanilla Ice is like, okay, this man is trying to make a buck off us, right? That's how it felt, and Cena goes over to there, and it was like, Cena wasn't cool no more. 
And once again, I'm also saying this here just because I'm black and my whole people on the podcast are black that it's because we can relate to him. I'm just saying white folks there were plenty of white friends, plenty of white friends who like the Dr. the Duck and Dominic seen it better than the my time is now seen. So don't create something that's not there. But anyway, I wasn't feeling that. And then it was super Cena and then it was like, oh my god, that it was like the fans was turning on him because it was like this ain't the Cena we want. Like, come on, we don't want this from the light Cena. We're we're the M Cena at. You know that that's what we want. And it was and he was get he, and then he was getting wins over Triple H and Kurt Angle and people on the top of the car like oh my god. And then he would just lose. And he'll come back. You ain't sixteen time world champion. It was like after a while it was annoying to the point like you wasn't in the Cena no more. But then the, it was about the kids. The kids in there, he was a top merch seller. You, you, you're not going to stop that. They had a thing for the heel turn. And then everybody like myself was like, yo, please turn Cena heel. Please turn Cena heel. 2012, they was really close to doing that with that feud with The Rock. But then Vince got cold feet. And was like, no, this the cash cow. We not turning him heel. And you he was sitting there like, man, I just want me a little thugonomics back, bro. Even if it ain't even going to be like the, the hip hop game, but you know, let him do something else. And he just, he just didn't, just didn't do it. And then, and then you know, then he, he then he started doing the, you know, he was dad. He was doing the, the military thing, you know, with the salute. I mean, you know, respect to the military, obviously. Then he was, you know, wearing the khaki shorts. So my dad was like, oh god, I just that scene made me just want to throw up. That 2013, I, I was like, I just, I'm, I'm over this. I, 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 I was just, I fancy the citation, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't know. I went all that. And uh, to 2015, when he had the run with the U- U- United States Championship, and he was like, okay, he had that run. I thought that was dope, but he was going, he was mixing up with, with new people. But then, you know, Cena's finally about to call the quits. Because a- after he left for a minute, you miss Cena. Then when he comes back, it's like, okay, it's cool. But like, you know, Cena, when he comes back, it's like it, it's cool. It pops a rating. It gets the kids involved. I mean, but Cena can't wrestle like he used to. Not saying Cena was the greatest wrestler that ever lived, neither. But he just don't wrestle like he used to. Okay, and he, of course, with the five moves of Doom, and every, every, ever since a while, he added about a six or seven move, especially during that United States Championship era. And yet, half the shit looked bad. His Hurricane Rana, his Springboard Sun, didn't like that. His, his diving leg drop, like all that shit, did not look great. But he was trying new stuff. I respect him for that. I respect him big for that, and I expect I I respect him doing the United States Open Challenge to the point where like it's he started that stuff and it, it has been catching on in other companies and other things like when they be doing the uh, AEW doing the TNT Open Challenge with Edge doing it or a lot of people just like, it's it's a it's a cheap gimmick they they help get you some matches to get people on the screen. But when he was first doing that, he was doing people like Cesaro, Sami Zayn, what he threw out the shoulder, Stardust, Xavier Woods. Those are the guys he was working with. And hey, Rusev, Alexander Rusev at that time, you know what I'm saying? I I was getting back into Cena. So then when he comes back, I, I don't look for Cena to wrestle. Like that match off there was terrible. You know, but uh now he calling it quits, like you you gonna miss Cena when he's gone. I feel He's gonna be like LeBron, like when LeBron finally retires, and all, all sometimes the hate LeBron gets. You are gonna miss LeBron when he gone. So then I be sitting thinking to myself like, well, twenty is twenty twenty five is the tour, and then the goodbye tour. People say, well, should he finally turn heel? I'm like, but di- not really, because even if he turns heel, it's not. I'm not. I'm not gonna believe it because you're gonna. He end up gonna be in the bay face by the end of the run, knowing he's gonna leave, and. He's not. He, he doesn't wrestle that well anymore. You know, like Cena got a whole big ass ball spot back. He said, like Cena don't wrestle well anymore, and I don't want to see that guy be trying to heal it up on a mic. He's not going to be the heel I want. He's not going to be Dr. Economics heel. That's not what he's going to be. He's going to be probably some other heel. Even even if he is Dr. Economics, I'm like, all right, you know, he still got a mouthpiece. That man can still, you know, drop a few bars. But uh, other than that, no. I ain't, try, I ain't trying to see that. You know what I'm saying? But I was sitting pondering to myself like, okay, so how does the run look? Me personally, I'm just like, I just think it should be like an all-star type run. I don't think, I think you, you can't implement a storyline. You can't implement like, can Cena beat the record and get the 17-time championship, you know, be 17-time champion. I don't mind implementing that story. If It depends on how the rest of me, like, okay, this bloodline story, Honestly, you never know. Plans can change. We're only in July right now. 
it could be a thing where it's like, okay, Rock and Roman for Vegas instead of trying to do it next year because they need to probably try to do Rock and Cody. But the way this Bloodline story is going, I, it's like big fight feel in Vegas. I can see them just saying, fuck it, let's do Rock and Roman in Vegas. You know? And then you, you can make the story like, well, Cena was going to try to go for his championship. Now, I wouldn't have Cena win the Rumble. I ain't, I, I ain't doing no shit like that. But it could be a day where he can go in there and outlast Elimination Chamber and maybe face Cody and made it. Cody would love to do something like that with was I seen it. And, and this is what I'm looking for. I don't need... Maybe Cena can go through through the hits, but I want to see Cena face newer guys and probably people that he has not faced often on the, on the roster when he was there. Like, I wouldn't mind seeing Rey Mysterio tying it up. Cena, I... I, I think out of respect you give Cena you give Cena and Orton one more time. But you don't need to. I think when Brock comes back, you probably give Cena and Brock another time, but you don't need to. But I do out of out of all those old school guys that Cena had great rivalries with, there is one guy I think that you do get you you should have one final match with, and that guy's CM Punk. If CM Punk is healthy enough. I think that you should do that match. And I'm not saying, I don't think, it's like, okay, Royal Rumble, I think he should be in the, the Rumble match. I think he should, I don't think he should have no singles, but I think he, because Cena's, I think he's not good anymore. So just let him be in the Rumble. The Elimination Chamber, if you're going to play up that 17 time championship story, then yeah, you can put him in the Chamber match. WrestleMania, I, I will give him, you know, a good opponent, have a storyline for him going in there. But I've heard this idea. And I agree with this idea. If you was to do CM Punk versus John Cena on that first Raw that's going to Netflix next uh, next year, I think that would be special. That would be something to hit that thing out the park. I mean, hit that thing out the park and get you put eyes on that brand on Netflix and we're not USA no more and we ain't got to worry about certain kind of censorship. I think you, put, you build that as a main event of CM Punk and John Cena one last time if CM Punk is healthy and Cena is like okay we good to go I think you do that it don't you I don't think when it comes to CM Punk you don't need no build up you don't need no storyline with it because they already have an extreme amount of history there there's already a lot of history between CM Punk and John Cena if you're a wrestler fan if you know you know but if you're not just go back just go back and look at 2011 just, 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 just go back and look up 2011 and I'll spell that whole thing out for you. That whole thing. And Cena and Punk have been having this awesome matches back in that back in that time. So I would say like yeah, you can do CM Punk and John Cena on that raw, that the first raw on Netflix, I think that would be fucking dope. And I would just like to see him mix it up with uh just some of the guys, I mean, he picks up with a lot of guys in his career, obviously. But, you know, we, we got newer people that, that's there. L.A. Knight. I would like to see him mix up with L.A. Knight, you know. Uh, uh, Jay Uso. Jay Uso's hot on the card. Drew McIntyre, obviously. You know, uh, Braun Breaker. Just to spirit the shit out of Cena. Absolutely. You know. Uh, a proper uh, uh, another match with Sami Zayn. I would like to do another match with Sami Zayn because for those who remember during the open challenge, Sami Zayn actually hurt himself uh, celebrating too hard, like do a showdown. So the match was like was cut really, really short, like only like a ten minute, twelve minute match. And but I'm like, but now a healthier Sami Zayn, yeah, I'll do that again. I mean, it ain't gonna be the same quality, but you know, just for off of principle, I would do that again. You know. And those names kind of like Carmelo Hayes. I would like to see Carmelo. I mean, obviously, they, they, they got to do some more work to get Carmelo Hayes, you know, more over right now. Uh, Bobby Lashley, because last time I seen him and Bobby go at it. I mean, if it, if it was recent, I really don't remember. I really probably tuned. 2019 is a blur to me when it comes to that wrestling uh, for WWE. But uh, Great American Bash 2007 is the last time I remember they've had a good quality match. And I'm just like, you know what? You can give, like, you know. Bobby, good hero, because I don't know what the fuck they're doing with Bobby right now. I don't need to do another AJ Styles, because him and AJ Styles have, have not had a bad match, but I just don't need to do AJ Styles, you know what I'm saying? So, those are the kind of things I'm looking forward to for Cena to do 
next year, and it's like, okay, you, you can implement a story about can he win 17 times, and I mean, yeah, that can be over the course or anything, but I really just think that Cena should just be just doing some kind of dream match opponents or just, you know, being like All-Star Weekend, just going there just and just doing everything. Be that if he wants to have like a, a, a storyline you know, to wrap everything up, you know, I think, I think that that's fine, but I still think that, you know, him being in the Rumble, him being in the Elimination Chamber, him being on Raw on Netflix, him being at WrestleMania, you know, it, it, there's opportunity. Things change the business. And honestly, as I'm thinking about it, Roman and Roman and uh, The Rock could headline night two, obviously. And you could just, like, if The Rock was I want Cody at WrestleMania, I'm like, you can do to him and Cody another fucking show, okay? Y'all can do that because right now this Bloodline thing, it you know it's how you can just build that up and just and just finally do it because once again everybody's getting older so you can just do in the story writes itself and then you can just do Cena and Cody on night on, on night one do Rock and Roman night two and do Cena and Cody and have that story can he win his 17 times that 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 would be a decent main match in Vegas I think that 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 would be a good idea so um I would do it I if I was booking it I would do it that way so. It's just that, you know, seeing Cena leave, it's just like, okay, you know, he's he's been here a while. He, he's, he has a big footprint. He's that whole Rufus Aggression era, that PG era. I was here for all of that. I was here for all of that. From 2002 to now, I was here for all of that. I've been watching wrestling since 92. But when Cena was getting there and getting his feet wet, I was there for all that. I got all the DVDs from that era. I, I watched all the shows from that era. Like, I, Cena has been on top for a long time and it is going to suck to see him go and retire but you know it is at that time everybody everybody has their day where they got to go on now once again they, he says never is never i mean wrestlers always say this is the end but you can never say never of uh, you know what money saudi Arabia money can come like that we see after Shawn michaels right however i do believe after that like i i think having a retirement tour I think it's a better way to say I'm just retiring. It's my last match here. Like if you can go out, you can go out the way you want to go out and be able to have a retirement tour. I think that'd be good. Then we can just celebrate how great Cena was the end of next year. So, props to you, Cena. I appreciate you. I appreciate you being nice to us, being nice to my son. You know, it took all damn day in that line. But you know what? I am going to miss Cena when he's gone, and he is an offer. They call him the goat. He's not my goat. But damn sure, first ballot Hall of Famer and one. It, it is in the conversation for impact for WWE of greatest of all time. You know, so keep, keep, keep that in mind. So shout out to you, Cena. You will be missed.